Hello everyone, this is Graham from .easy coming to you with another video. Today we're going to be coming to you with an updated video on one of the ones we did previously, which is setting up email on a mobile device. In this case, we're going to be focusing this on an iPhone, which got an iPhone handy here. And we're going to be showing you how to set up IMAP accounts using SSL. SSL is a format that allows for encryption for your email, so it is much more secure and ideally the way you want to run it. Not all actual networks allow this to work, so you want to make sure to check with your internet provider or your local IT group if you're not sure if it supports it, but much better to go through and use if you can. We're going to be setting up an IMAP account here instead of a POP account. These are the two different formats anyone on cPanel has access to. The difference between these two is push versus pull is what it's referred to as. For the POP account, it'll basically grab all the email from your account and download a copy onto your program or your phone, tablet, whatever device you're setting it up on. When you download all the email, it actually stores a separate copy. It creates a copy of the message that's separate from your account. So if you delete the message from a POP account, it leaves the copy on the server still and doesn't touch it. They're independent of each other. If you set up an IMAP, everything synchronizes together. Now, with most people having more than one device, so phone, computer, tablet, IMAP is a lot better because it means what shows up on one shows up on all the others. So if you delete one message, it's now deleted across all of the accounts and you don't have to keep deleting or managing them all. It's much easier to set up. And that's why we're going to be showing it here. Also, a lot of people prefer the IMAP format, which is why we're also using this as well. Now, anyone here on cPanel will be able to use both the SSL and will be able to use the IMAP format. Generally for IMAP, we suggest to be on one of the higher plans like the unlimited hosting so that you have sufficient space to store all the emails on the account, especially if you're using this for a business and have multiple email accounts, it can definitely start to climb up there pretty high. So you'll see your best results on the unlimited hosting plan. That's why we suggest to go on it. And we're gonna be basing it off of one of those types of accounts. You can see kind of what it is. We're gonna be going through the whole setup process. So the first thing we need to do is make sure there's an actual email account set up. Now, most of you will already have this set up. If you've already got your email account set up, all you're gonna need is to know your password for the email account. We'll show you how to go in and change it if you've forgotten it, but otherwise we're gonna start from scratch. Basically go in, set up the account, set it up within the cPanel, make sure you have the email account all set up, show you where to find all the settings you need to enter into your phone, and finally go through the actual phone itself and set up the entire account process, start to finish so that you can see it working and it is verified and got all the way through. So we're going to start off here by going into the .ec site. We've already got it up here, which is just simply www.easy.com. From here, we need to go into Member Zone. So we're going to click on Member Zone Login at the top right corner, and then we need to log into the actual account itself. Then we click Continue to sign in to get past the loading page there, and here we're into the actual Member Zone with all the familiar different options. The option we need to go into here is the site admin panel. You'll find this under the quick reference heading. It's about halfway down the list. And you'll see it says cPanel in brackets. You wanna click on that one. Then we get it to load up here. It does a little redirection into cPanel and automatically it logs you in. So here we're into cPanel directly. We need to go under the mail heading into email accounts. Now, just to note, those of you who have been extensively using cPanel, you may have actually moved these around, so it may not be in the same location, because you can actually drag and drop these. So if you don't have it at the top here, just look through your list, it should be wherever you last put it. Once we're into email accounts, you can see here, we've already got a couple different accounts set up here. They're just temporary test accounts. We can also see under email accounts here, it's asking where one we want to set up, we can set up any new one. So for those of you who have already set up an account and forgot your password, you can easily go to the change password here in the table, and this is how you can reset the password. It'll just ask you for the new password. You don't even need to know what the other one is. Just type it in and click change password. You're good to go. In this case here, we're gonna set up a brand new account. So we're just gonna call this .easy and then we're gonna put in password. Password, it does need to be a sufficient strength here. And you can see the password I'm using here for this one is 84, so very good. And the password needs to be at least 55, otherwise it's gonna give you a message saying it needs to be stronger. So if you do have a lower security password, just keep playing around with it and you'll eventually get a good one. If you need to, you can write it down, but make sure it is a strong enough password. 
You can then choose your mailbox quota. Because we're using IMAP, this is very important because it will synchronize across all the devices, including the server. And this is why we said again that unlimited hosting is your best chance for it because you can set up higher limits like 250 megs per account. In this case, we're gonna set it to unlimited so we have as much space as we want. We have a total freedom with the account. I'm gonna create the account here. As you can see, it's just setting everything up and then you'll get the big green question mark saying, or check mark saying everything's okay, it's all set up. You can now see it in the lower table. From this here, you've now got everything you pretty much need in order to set it up. Now we need to go in and find the settings. Now this we can do from this exact same screen where we are right now. We just need to simply click on the more button, which you'll find on the far right beside it, whichever account you want to set it up for. When you click on more, you want to go to configure email client. And here we go. This provides you with all the settings itself that you're going to need to set up on the phone and any other device. Now you can go in to more than one account and go in to check the more button. You really don't have to do this because all the settings are identical. The only thing that it really changes is the username for each account. The username is just the actual email address itself. So don't worry about going into the other accounts. They're not going to have different settings. You only need to go into one account specifically to look and set this up. So here we can see we've got the username. The password, it doesn't actually put in just for security reasons, so just make sure you do remember it. You can reset it based on what we already showed you if need be. Here's our incoming server, here's the port numbers, the outgoing server, and then again the port numbers. Now, because we're using SSL, you need to make sure to use the settings under the secure SSL settings. If you have any trouble with the SSL or if you don't have the ability to go through it on your network, like some hospitals, some military installations don't allow them, you can go ahead and use these ones. But for the sake of this one, since it is more secure and the better way to go, we're going to be showing you the SSL ones. So now we've got absolutely everything we need for the phone to set it up. So this is pretty much as far as we need to go on the computer. The rest of this is going to be done from the phone itself. So just make sure to keep these little settings in handy. Your settings will be similar. The only thing that's going to change is again your username. Your server number may be different than the one we're using. That's actually independent to account. So don't worry if your server number is different. Just make sure to copy in your server number of what it shows here and then you won't have any problems. So with that we're going to be switching across to the phone now. And now that you saw how we set up the account and we've got the email settings in front of us, it's time to actually start working on the phone. So here we've got our iPhone and we've got it set up from just the main screen from when you turn on the phone or when you're doing anything. So we need to start off by going into the settings. Uh, so from here we need to scroll down to mail contacts and calendars. And from here we need to go to add account because you'll see right now it's only the normal iCloud account. We need to scroll down the list of different providers to other because we're setting up our own private domain one. We then need to go to add mail account under mail. Now going to ask us several pieces of information. So the name here doesn't actually matter per se too much. This you can actually put in anything you wish. Whenever you do send an email though, it will include the name in the message you send. So just do keep that in mind, but there is no actual wrong answer for it. The username should or sorry, the email address is just your full email address. So exactly as you set up before. And we're just gonna type this in here. And as you can see here, we're doing this one-handed because we have to get the camera in here. We don't want to clog it up too much. And then where it says password, we need to go ahead and put this in as well. You can see, there we go, that symbol. And then we need to put in the password we set up. And then you can see it put in the description as well. Description doesn't actually matter at all. It's stored mainly by the actual iPhone. It differentiates between which account is which. So if you have more than one iPhone account, you can easily take care of which one is which, especially for your domain if you're setting up like an info and an admin account together. You can put in info at your domain or admin at your domain just to make it easier to differentiate between. Once you've got this all here, we need to click on where it says next going to quickly look up the account. It's going to make sure that the actual email address you have matches the password and it's going to try and grab some settings as well. We then we want to start off by looking at where it says IMAP or POP. It'll always default to IMAP and it's in blue because we're setting up an IMAP account. We want to make sure it's in blue and highlighted there. The next three options are what we typed in previously so we don't need to worry about that. We're going down to where it says incoming mail server and we're going to start off with the settings here. Now these settings are based off of the previous ones we we're looking at. This is in the gray section on the website for the secure SSL settings. I'm going to start putting this in here. So 
So the host name is going to be the long, complicated incoming server name we showed before. Now again, your server name may actually be different than the one we're showing here. That's again, it's just because it's set up directly for your account. And this is just based on the one our sample domain is set up on that we're using. So if you have a different one, it's okay. Just put it in here instead. And you may want to just double check it over for any kind of typos or anything because it's very easy to mess it up. Once we've got the user, once we've got the host name in there, we can set up the username next. The username is actually simple. It's just your email address, nothing else, nothing special. So we're going to put that in here. And then we can see the password's already in there, so we don't need to worry about the password. Next section is for the outgoing server. Now you're gonna notice here it says the username and the password are optional. They're actually not optional. You do need to put them in. They're only optional if you're ever gonna be using your actual phone carrier for their settings, because just about every other carrier for email is gonna force you to log in properly for proper authentication and security purposes. So for the host name, we're actually going to be putting in the same thing as we did before. It's exactly the same, no difference. The username we're going to be putting in again, even though it says optional, you do need to put it in. This is again, just your email address. And then last but not least, we actually need to put in the password this time. And with that, we're set. We can now click on where it says next and it's going to verify. As you can see here, it already verified, showed the new account. Depending on your internet connection and the phone, the specific iOS version you're using, it may take longer or shorter to verify. If it seems to be taking longer than it took for us, that's okay, just leave it for a bit. It'll go ahead and work. Now that we've gone ahead and set it up and it's set okay, we're gonna click on where it says save says adding account and there you go the account's been added it now shows up in the list so now before we go in and actually start using the mail we're going to just quickly check a couple settings because the iphone doesn't actually give you all the email settings until you've actually set up the account so we're going to click on sample domain.net and then going to click on your account under where it says imap and here we're going to go down and start off by going to the outgoing server now this one needs to be checked first of all because the phone doesn't necessarily set up the actual settings you should be using it'll sometimes set up the settings it wants to use. And we're gonna go into here, we're gonna to go to the primary server. And then for here, we're gonna check and make sure all the settings we wanted are in here. One thing we need to check here, is you can see it's actually set up a different port number than the one we want, which is one of the reasons it's good to go in here. And we're gonna change this to 465. 465 is the official SSL port. So pretty much any device that allows an SSL connection will work across this port. So it's a good idea to change this. Any other port number you have there is hit or miss. It may or may not work. And we're gonna to go to verifying. And you can see here, it's now starting the verification process because it has to now verify all the security settings that we've been playing with, because it has more of them. It's gonna take a little longer to verify than before. Okay, and now that it's gone ahead and verified, it's come back to the screen here for the SMTP settings. And this is where we're gonna come back to. If you do get an error message, something like username and password are off, just make sure to go in and make retype it in there. Maybe the username, you can see it. If it's the password, just erase it all, retype it just to be sure. Otherwise, it should verify no problem and come back here. We're then gonna go to accounts at the top. And from here, we need the next going to advanced. This is the last set of settings we wanna check before we actually start using the account. Now this one here is set up for the actual server mailboxes. We're trying to sync up the phone and the actual server so that they match one another. So for the drafts mailbox, we're gonna select drafts from the server version. You're gonna see a little check mark. We're then gonna go back, we're gonna go to send mailbox and we're gonna select sent on the server, go back. And then you got it, deleted messages, trash once again. Archive mailbox, we're not doing just because we don't have an archive mailbox on the account on the server, we just set it up so there's not really any custom servers, but you can easily set it to match up to one of the server folders as well. What this means is that now, whenever we use this account, any drafts we put will be not only on the phone's draft, but in the server's draft, the sent boxes will be synced up as well, as well as the trash can. So they are the same across. Then going to account, 
clicking on done at the very top, saves the settings. We're now pretty much done. We can go to the main screen here. I'm going to go into mail. And now the next thing you want to do is you want to test the account to make sure it's working properly. So we're going to go into write a new message. We need to use our email address. Best thing to do is to go ahead and actually go to the exact same account that you're using. That way you're testing both the incoming and the outgoing at the same time. There we go. And then we're going to put in test for the subject line and then test of SSL. And then you can see the little message saying it's from the phone. We're going to click on send. And there it goes sending. You can see across the bottom. And then picked it up already. So from this we can see now that the phone was able to send out the message. It hit the server. The server then knew that there was a new message, told the phone there was a new message, the phone downloaded it in. So we can see with insurance here that it is actually sending and receiving properly. So that's how we can set up the actual iPhone to be receiving IMAP email using SSL settings, which is certainly a lot more secure than the other settings. So it is the better way to go if you can. With the IMAP, you know it's going to be able to synchronize across all your devices, making it easier to use email in general. And thanks for watching. As you can see here, we've now gone ahead and set up the phone and we've got it all working. Test emails went through without a problem. So like always, make sure to like our video, make sure to check out our YouTube channel, subscribe to it, and we're going to be coming to you with more videos as well, as always. And make sure to do check out our Facebook page as well, because we do have deals and other promotions, more videos, more information coming out. So it is always a good thing to subscribe to, like, and check out as well. Thank you for watching our video as always.